even on one FM station. I can send you the link for you to, I mean, watch yourself. Um, they reported of some of our brothers actually traveling from as far as, I mean, from Nottingham to as far as Manchester to donate their sperms just to make money to be able to survive. That's how bad it is. And some of our sisters, of course, for, I mean, just to keep body and soul together. <laughs> Yuki, so mon konku sinya diye. On skola shepono. Se se skola shepono, eh, according to omo chile si yintu ya. Inti ye mo omo abes na bagana, eh, no bimbe yin. Na we no penyini bi ye ni interview, eh, o metro TV. Na o wivili, eh, ye secret wo ho se. Eh, because of that, inti, nko fu ni sike omo le tu omo hon, eh, di kusuku ni adi adi inti. Omo stante, eh, di omo spams no mu do niti. Eh, di jiska mse, wow. Adi a jume ni yuki ya na. Ah, student ya, o ye student no. Weti mako du yuki. Na a human who are necessary, I was spams now. Who could do need in? Nasa, I want to train or pain or this a assembly a busy. Young come through TV, open it to our walker, and you're not making or so a mutti yuki ho, and one more a donate spams. Said the bill meeting me at na yuki because a comma ya. You could in a pious apre. Pious apre is a student uh, in Kent University, also suffering probably the same uh, challenges. Let's speak with him and then we come back into the studio. Pius, thank you for your time. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Annie, and thanks for having me on your program. Great. And thank you for making time to speak to us on this issue. Okay. Um, firstly, tell us a little about yourself, the school you are, and your, your, the nature of your challenge. Uh, okay, so yeah, my name is Pius, as you've mentioned. I'm pursuing a PhD in University of Kent Business School. Um, I mean, my, well, I'm done with my, my third year, I'm in my fourth year now. Um, I've been if here you since, can lift um, your voice, and raise your voice a bit, we 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 can hardly hear you. Yeah, so I said I'm 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 pursuing a PhD program at the University of Kent Business School. Um, I've been here since um, 2021 September, um, and so yeah, I'm here on a government Ghana government scholarship, okay, no. a beneficiary of course. Um, so with the scholarship, my, I mean it comes with payment of tuition fees and then monthly stipends. As we speak now. Um, our tuition fees, my tuition fee has not been paid. Yeah, so the school has issued warning letters upon warning letters to me. Um, I'm sure the next, I'm sure the next letter that is going to, I'm going to receive probably will be, of course, withdrawal or blocking of my student portal. Um, I've been here for 20, yeah, 37 months. Throughout these years, um, I've only received nine months of stipends. A stipend I'm supposed to be. I mean, paid every month. I've been paid only nine months, so I'm owed 27 months of stipends, and I'm not the only one in this situation. There are lots and lots and lots of us, and so it's difficult for us as students here. Yes, yeah, so that's how um, that's how come we, we I mean we came out to appeal to the government if something could be done, and like you already said, some students, of course, in other universities, um, have received withdrawal letters. And I've been served notices of deportation from the Home Office. Um, 11, like you said, from the University of Birmingham, one from the University of, uh, sorry, two from Bradford. A couple of them keep sending, I mean, uh, how do you call it, emails to me, some of my colleagues. I mean, they have similar issues, warning letters. In fact, there are actually a, a lot of uh, master students, those who are done with their master's degrees, who are not able to graduate because, of course, they are, they, they are old school fees. So until the school fees is paid, they cannot be allowed to graduate. So they are stuck here. They don't know what to do at the moment. So some have fortunately completed, but they cannot graduate because it's, they still owe school fees. Yes, yes. Uh, those who are, you know, receiving the letters, where are they now? Because uh, obviously in the letter it's captured that they've stopped, you know, studying with Braxford University. On what conditions did they yeah, stop? Yeah, so they are, I mean... They are putting up with people, they are, yeah. So they are just waiting for, I mean, to see if something can be done. Otherwise, by 9th uh, November, they would have no choice but to come back home. That's a problem now. What would be... Okay. Um, okay, so we're told that our ladies, our men, are also engaged in one activity or the other, you know, to keep body and soul together. Can you explain that? Yeah, so... Actually, uh, two colleagues from...
from University of Nottingham granted an interview actually even on one FM station. I can send you the link for you to I mean to watch yourself. Um, they reported of some of our brothers actually traveling from as far as I mean from Nottingham to as far as Manchester to donate their sperms just to make money to be able to survive. That's how bad it is. And some of our sisters, of course, for I mean just to keep body and soul together. They, f they found themselves in some relationships. I mean, definitely, ordinarily, they wouldn't probably, be, I mean, you know, enter by them because they need places to sleep. They need food to eat. They want to be able to, I mean, survive. And so, I mean, they are engaged in all sorts of, you know, like some of these relationships, which, of course, are not right. Yeah. And that is just for survival purposes, not to even pay school fees. Yeah, yeah. Because you are talking about each student paying an average of sixteen thousand pounds. I mean, that's not, that's not small money. So doing that, you can I mean, you only have to. They are doing those things just to get money to probably be. Pay, I mean, pay. I mean, bills. You understand? Um, yes. Not the school fees itself. No. What, what? When last did you speak with uh, um, the Ghana government, and what was the response? Because uh, at, at some point in time, we received information that some monies had been released, especially to UK students' uh, fees to be paid. What was the communication? I mean, at that time. Okay, so uh, I think about four months or so ago, I personally wrote a letter to the Ghana High Commission to Honorable Papa Usuankuma. I mean, expressing my feelings, I mean, whatever I think that we are going through, and if something could be done to help us. Um, to date, he has not responded officially to me. However, I met him in person, in central, somewhere in central London, and I introduced myself to him, that I was the one who wrote the letter, and so, what's happening? What is he doing to us? He told me, point that, look, you know what? They've also been knocking on the doors in Ghana, and that they are helpless. They are getting no responses, so he doesn't know what to do now. I mean... He couldn't give me any definite answer. He told me he was going to respond to my letter, of course, but to date, about four months ago, he's not responded um, to me. Again, um, so the register of the scholar secretariat normally meets the students, I mean, quarterly to have meetings with us on Zoom, you know, to tell us, I mean, how things are going and all that. Um, it used to be very frequent some years back, about two years, when I came here two years ago, whatever, I mean, it was okay, but... For the past one year, or some months, close to one year, he hasn't done that. And of course, I know the situation he finds himself in. Definitely, he doesn't have good news for us, so he can't come out to tell us um, exactly what is happening. So, yes, in June, July, we heard that some monies have been released to take off some of these problems we are going through. Six, 60 million. We had a rumor that uh, some people have been paid. Fact, the, the amount was 60 million yes. Ghana cities, converting that into yes. UK pounds to be about... Yes, we heard some people have been paid on the site. So we got agitated. I mean, how, why, why would some people be paid? What, what was the criteria? In fact, we have evidence, evidence, as hardcore evidence, that people have been paid. I have a file on my phone now I can share with you. I mean, some students secretly conducted a survey, I mean, to find, from, find out from students who have, been, I mean, who have been paid their stipends and tuition. And they got some information. I think later on, the secretariat got to know, I mean, students were doing that, so they quickly came in and then. But at least I have, I have the data on my phone as we speak now. I could share with you later. Students, their names, their universities, their ID numbers, whether their stipends have been paid, whether they are tuition, whether both. I mean, it's, and you, clearly, I mean, some people have been paid. You understand? Like as, as much as 10,000 pounds. So the, the problem is, why are you paying some people 5,000, 10,000, 6,000 pounds? Whilst others receive nothing, for, I have not received anything for 27 months. You owe me 27 months. You don't give me any, I mean, 10, but you pay others. So, but there's a, but there's um, a, there's a criteria for payments, right? Yes, I mean, you pay everybody. Yeah. That's, I mean, once we are all once here, you release, you we are release all funds. Mm. Yeah, so you don't discriminate. Mm. Right. Um, Pius, what's the next move? We're told that you are pick picketing at the uh, Ghana High Commission. On the twentieth yes. of September, and yes. then yes. after, so that, after the, that, what? Of course, we've been we've been in the media for some time now. So I mean, we're expecting that definitely the government, I mean, or the powers that be, they would have heard us. But we still haven't really received any 
official statement from either the High Commission, from the Secretariat, or the government that, I mean, we are taking steps to do this. And so on this particular day, we are going to pay this and that and that. You understand? And so we have no choice but to, of course, pick it at the Ghana High Commission. We've done our checks. I have personally done that. I mean, gone to the police to speak with them and all that, and everything is in order now. So 20th, like um, you really said, we're going to pick it at the High Commission. I will pick it and pick it and pick it and pick it for as many times as possible. So, I mean, we are listened to. But, so, so either you're listened to or you are sent back home. Exactly. If, I mean, unfortunately, if uh, our governments want us to be sent home, well, that's, um, but we would continue to knock on their doors. And I think through the picketing, maybe something would come out. Uh, Paz, we'll leave you here. Do you have any other information to add? Um, no, really. We are only pleading with the government that, look, we found ourselves in a, a very tight situation, and a, I mean, a stressful situation. And so uh, we are asking that our tuition and our stipends, if, I mean, they really care about us, we are pleading that they come to our aid and then sort us out. So that's basically what I have to say this morning. All right. I, I'm grateful for your time. The more you two, honey. Minimum, I'm going to go to the comments. I'm going to go to the comments. I'm going to go to the comments. I'm going to go to the comments.